Have you had the experience of posting on social media and then wondering why your posts don't get as much love as the posts that you see other people get? Why is that? The reason why that is, is because you have, you, you have forgotten how the social media algorithm works. Maybe you've done, you didn't know about it. So here's how, whether you're talking about Twitter or LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or most social media platforms, this is generally how the algorithm works. They show you in the newsfeed, in the homepage, the posts that are the most popular posts. That's so in, in other words, do you have to realize that you are looking at only the one, the top 1% of the posts that are being, that are available right now. You don't usually see the other 99% of the posts, including from some famous people. Yes. So you're like, how come when I post stuff, it doesn't get this much love? Well, it's like saying, how come when I put out a piece of music, it's not in the top 10 pop records? <laughs> it, it's ridiculous, but that's, we forgot that that's how the algorithm works. So I'm personally experiencing this right now on Twitter, okay? A lot of you probably don't use Twitter. Oh, and by, I should say, by the way, I should include YouTube in that same feeling. Oh, I posted a YouTube video. How come it's not getting dozens, hundreds, thousands, millions of views like I see all the YouTube videos get when I surf YouTube? Well, because YouTube shows you that top 1% of the most popular videos that are out there right now, they don't show you all the hard work of everybody else who slaves away in obscurity. Sometimes all of us do that. Even the most successful people sometimes post stuff and they get way less engagement than they expected. Everyone, it's relative for everyone. For you, your range of, of engagement might be zero <laughs> to 10, okay? For someone famous, their range of engagement might be 100,000 to a million. And so when they post a video, when someone famous posts a video and they only get 200,000 views, they're like, they're like depressed because they usually get 2 million views. They're like, what's going on? Why is my audience gone, right? For you, it's like, how come I got zero likes at all? So it's, it's, a rel it's, a, it's relative for everybody. Everybody has their own level of depression or has, has their own level of trigger for what creates anxiety, depression, discouragement, wanting to quit, et cetera, et cetera. But, but for me right now, it's happening on Twitter where I, I have you know, 4,000 followers on Twitter and I've been posting for years. To be honest with you, I have not... Um, I have not been paying attention to my Twitter strategy for years. I just kind of post there by rote. It's kind of I post there because I'm, I'm posting some, I post a, you know, a, a link. I might as well post it on Twitter too. It's, it's been very brainless for me. And so uh, recently I've gotten more interested in Twitter because of the politic, political stuff. So I go on Twitter, I post something and I'm discouraged that, I, that nobody responds to me on Twitter. Not a single like, not a single comment, none. You go to my Twitter, check it out. Look at all my posts nothing like, like I'm a nobody, but I have 4,000 followers and I'm still a nobody. Okay. On Facebook, on the other hand, I only have 6,000 followers. You think about 4,000, 6,000 is not that different, but on my Facebook page, I have 6,000 followers. And right when I post something within an hour, I at least get a few likes, you know, and then within a day or two, it's usually a, a few dozen. And so it's like, you know, then, then my average on Facebook might be somewhere around who knows, maybe, maybe 40 or something like that. And so if I only get 10 likes and I'm discouraged, if I get 60 likes and I celebrate or whatever, but it's, you have to realize that what you're seeing in the newsfeed is not what most people are doing, which everyone else, just like you, is slaving away in obscurity. Everyone else is doing the same thing most of the time. And only once in a while, one of their things pop and that's what you see and you, you engage with it and they, they get even more excited. And so here's what I want you to try. <clears throat> Next time you go on, and in fact, I, I, I'm using Zoom, so I might as well show you my screen. And if you'll just give me a moment, I will, I will do that right now. So if you go, I'm just gonna show, you know, if you go on, um, except there are some things where you have clicked on see first. And so those you always see first on Facebook, but there are other things that you don't see, uh, you don't see first. So. 
So for example, you know, this is a gorgeous picture of her family. And so she's getting lots of love and likes, you know, 18, right? Now, if you go to her profile normally, hi, Caroline. Um, if you go to her profile normally, okay, so this is 18 likes, two likes. You see, 18 is not usually how much she gets. Now there's only two, right? This one, only one, right? Okay, and thankfully, <laughs> zero comments, one like, one share, oh my God. You know, with zero likes, zero comments, it just keeps going for years now. And so to be honest, right now I'm, I'm discouraged about Twitter, but I've been doing it for years. Now I'm actually paying attention to it. I'm trying to figure out, figure it, figure out, figure out what, this, what the system is. But, but the truth is, like I said, even if I go to any person, okay, this person has 372 likes as an example, right? And 10 comments. Well, does that mean she's always that popular? Well, let's go take a look, okay? Let's go, to, let's go look at, see, I'm, I'm really into the Yang, uh, Andrew Yang right now. So I, that's why I follow Twitter. I'm really excited about, about him. But look, 15, not, not hundreds, right? And then let's look at another thing. One like, 17 hours ago, one like. Okay, 19 hours ago, only four likes, right? 101, okay, great. But see most of her, 372. But see, most of her stuff only has a few likes, if anything. Now, of course, if you, if you post about Andrew Yang or Yang Gang, you're gonna start getting likes on, on Twitter. That's because Andrew Yang pretty much dominates Twitter and YouTube uh, these days in terms of comments and stuff. Um, but that's not why I like him. I like him because of, because of his, his character, his policies, et cetera. But, but, but here's, here's my, my, my point is not, my point ironically, the point I'm trying to make here is not that you should um, try to get more likes and comments and shares. So let me, let me tell you what my point is here. My point is if you compare your, 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 your ongoing posts with how much engagement you're getting with your ongoing stuff, with what you're seeing on the home screen of Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or name the social media platform you want, okay? You are going to get discouraged. Stop comparing most of your posts Stop comparing all of your posts, any of your posts, with the kind of likes and shares and comments that are that you're seeing in the home page, because the home page is only the popular stuff. You go to that person's profile and you look at their stuff. Most of their stuff is not that popular. It's only once in a while something pops. And same thing with you. Once in a while something you post will pop. You just don't know when. You just don't know when. Now you you kind of there are of course tricks. People either use these tricks consciously or unconsciously. A lot of times it's unconscious, but one of the tricks is to post pictures of people. Put, pick, post a picture of yourself, you're going to get lots of likes. People recognize your face. They, oh, they recognize you and they just like things that they recognize. Okay. Um, post something controversial, you'll get lots of comments. Right. So there, there are certain tricks that we use consciously or unconsciously to try to get validation, to try to get engagement. But the point, number one point, is to stop comparing how much engagement you're getting to the, the normal news feed or the normal Twitter feed or normal YouTube feed that you're seeing, because it's not fair. You're comparing your normal stuff with everyone else's best hits. And, and everyone else only has one best hit every now and then. Okay, just like you, you might have a good best hit every now and then. For some of us, it's only once every few months. For some of us, it's once every few days, but it depends on how often you post. Okay, it depends on how often you post. So how many, in, in terms of how many hits do you have? If you have lots of hits, I mean, so if you have lots of, lots of um, at-bats, if you have lots of opportunities to, if you give yourself a lot of opportunity by posting a lot, then you'll have one of them is more likely to go viral, okay? That's my first point. But my second point really is that if you are posting in hopes of a best hit, you will be discouraged 99% of the time or 90% of the time or however, what, whatever your ratio happens to be. You'll be discouraged most of the time. And worse than being discouraged is, is this, in my opinion. Worse than being discouraged is you're always going to be grasping, emotionally grasping. Like, oh, I'm, I'm doing this to get some kind of comments. I'm doing this to get some kind of reaction from people. And whenever you do that, you're trying to get validation. You're trying to get praise. You're trying to get 
some reaction. Every time you do that, you lose a little bit of your authentic power. Every time you do that, you are trying to live based on external approval rather than finding an internal locus of motivation. And secondly, besides losing your authentic power, you're also, the, the world is missing out on your unique creativity because your unique creativity is sometimes and maybe oftentimes not gonna be resonant with most people. That's what makes you a uniquely creative person. What is unique is therefore not recognized by, does that make sense? Let, let, me, let me make this super clear. People like what they recognize. People comment and share what they recognize. So if you're being unique, which is adding a unique contribution in the world, you might not get recognized for a while. You see, until, until you build an audience of true fans on that platform. Like I am grateful on Facebook, on my Facebook business page, facebook.com slash George Cal community. I have two Facebook pages. One is my business page. One is my personal page. My business page is really where my true fans are. Facebook.com slash George Cal community, right? That I have, I have a true fan base there. On Twitter, I have no true fan base at all. Like it's been built years and years ago before I re really understood authentic marketing and I was just building people, you know, gathering people there. And it's, it was not authentic when I built it 10 years ago. YouTube, I have an authentic fan base of like 30 people. It says I have 3000 subscribers, but really only 30 of you on YouTube are watching my videos. Okay. So thank you for the 30 of you who are watching. Um, on Instagram, I have an authentic fan base of maybe 50 to 100 people, even though I have a thousand followers there. Um, so it's like when you, when you finally build an authentic fan base, then you will just be getting engagement all the time. It just becomes normal. And then, then, then you become somebody who has a higher relative, like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm more encouraged when I get 50 likes instead of just only 20 or whatever, you know what I mean? So it's, so, so do not lose your authentic power because that is the most valuable thing you can contribute in the long term. Because if you're always giving away your authentic power and living based on external approval, then you will eventually become just like everybody else. You will eventually kind of meld in and, and, and just become just, a, just another provider in your industry that's not that's nothing, nothing really special. But if you keep on gathering your authentic power and how, here's how you gather your authentic power. Before you post on social media, the first step is not to like, oh, I hope this gets reactions. What do I need to do to make sure this gets reactions? Do I need to post an image of a cute cat, cute dog, cute baby, post a picture of myself, okay? Because people recognize me and they'll like me. <laughs> do I need to say something super clever in the title? See, all this stuff is just giving away your power, okay? If it's not really resonant for you, okay? So the first step is to source your authentic power. That's the first, and however you do that, for me, it's doing my energy reboot, which I've talked about many times. If you don't know, Google energy, energy reboot George Cow, and you'll, you'll see how I do it. So I do my energy reboot first. I source my authentic power. I source, where is my source of infinite worth? Because as a human being, I am either worth infinite or I am worth nothing because there is no self. Okay, so it's like you have to decide one or the other or maybe it's both. But where do you source your infinite worth? You, you cannot put your infinite, you cannot put your self worth on how many likes you're gonna get in the next post. You're, you're gonna die. You're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna you know go, be, be depressed. You can't do that. But that's what we forget because that's what society has taught us. Oh, we success is what other people say is successful. No, success is what we define. Okay, that's what I remind, I'm here to remind. That's what authentic means. You get to define what success means for you. What happiness means for you. So. First step is to source, it's, it's a spiritual practice, this is the first. 
right? So it, it's nothing you just do once and now you're good for the rest of your life. You do it as a practice many times a day if you, if you need to. That's step one. <clears throat> step two, go ahead and post something based on your authentic truth, not based on, oh, I think this is going to be popular because this is, no, based on your authentic truth. This is what I believe in. This is what I, excites me right now. This is what I'm inspired by right now. This is, this is a problem I'm really thinking through right now. This is something I think will serve you authentically. I don't know if it will or not. I don't care if you give me likes or not. From that place is where you post, okay? <clears throat> Source yourself energetically, post from your authentic truth. And, and here's a step three that's super important. Go do something else. Don't sit there and, and wait and check. I wonder who's going to be the first liker. I wonder who's going to, and I'll tell you, I, I am making this video in part from, for myself. I need to watch this video too, because especially when I'm on Twitter, I get super desperate, right? And I got to remind myself, this is why I'm making the video. I'm like, I, over the past few weeks, as I've got, <clears throat> gotten more involved in the, in the Yang gang Twitter stuff, I'm like, God, I'm getting desperate again. I'm, 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 feeling, I'm feeling the graspiness. I'm feeling the yearning for validation. And I, now I'm aware, oh, that's, I'm losing my power here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And on, on Facebook, sometimes like, like, I'm like that too. So if you see me making the Facebook Live video and right afterwards, I'm li liking or loving your comment, I've just lost some of my groundedness. I'm not perfect. So I, I'm reminding myself, after I make this Facebook Live video, stop. Don't check for the likes and loves and, and like, you know, and, and <laughs> go do something else now. Um, so that's step three. Go do something else. Don't check. Okay. And step four is only check your engagement occasionally. By occasionally, it could mean even once a week. It could mean a day later. Okay. It could mean eight hours later or four hours later, but it's not immediate. So you're, 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 you're checking with some spaciousness between when you post it and when you're checking so that you're not, you're not tying your sense of happiness and your sense of accept, being accepted to what you just posted. That's every time you do that, you, you lose, okay? You lose your power, you lose your groundedness. So give yourself that spaciousness, whether it's four hours, eight hours, a day, or seven days, or two weeks, or whatever, before you check the engagement on that post. And when you do check for the engagement, what you're looking for is you're really comparing it. You're not saying, oh, I'm a good person, or I'm a smart person, or I'm a clever person. That you've just lost your power again. But what you're checking for is you're checking more from this point of view of curiosity. I want you to take on curiosity and go, huh, isn't that interesting? Huh, isn't that, isn't that curious that this one got zero likes? Huh, okay, all right. That means this topic is something that uh, is ahead of, I'm ahead of my time. I'm like a Buckminster Fuller. I'm ahead of my time, you know? And, and in the future, they, they will finally understand because in the future, especially with AI, AI will be able to c consume all the con information and finally understand how unique you are. Um, but uh, that far future, you'll finally be understood for that post. But, uh, but, but if, or if it got a lot of likes above average. So, so in other words, step four is when you are checking with enough spaciousness, you are comparing your own posts. You're not comparing how good you are. You're comparing the metrics of your own posts. Like, oh, look at this last post compared to the last few posts. Did it do better or worse in terms of reactions and comments and shares? Oh, if it did better, that means this topic is something that my audience feels that they recognize or that they feel served by or that really excites them. Okay. So note that in mind or write that down or whatever you need to, to say, do I want to, now that I understand that this topic is better for my audience than, than, than the other topics that I usually do, I can make a choice to say, do I want to do more like that? Because I know if I do more like that, it will probably do, get more engagement as well. Being careful not to tie my self-worth to that, uh, but doing it in service to say, okay, if I want to serve my audience better, maybe I should do more of that because they feel more served by it. Not, but, but don't do it because, oh, I think I'm going to get more engagement because then I'll feel like a better, I'll feel like a smarter and more popular person. D you know, do it because, do, post more like that if it's genuinely more in service of your audience, okay? And don't do it if it's because you, you'll feel 
better about yourself. So I hope this is helpful. Um, I was going to say, let me know if you have any questions or comments, but I'm going to, to not say that, especially for this video. Uh, and I'm not going to check for the live. Uh, I usually, I think it's a, it's a courteous thing to do on a live video to go and check and say, thank you. So, and so, so, and so for joining me. So I usually do that for all my videos, but for this video, I'm purposely not going to do that. Not that doing that is a bad thing. I'll, I'll do that going forward. But for this video, I'm going to almost set a, a stricter boundary than I usually do and, and, and not check to see who's watching this. Um, that's one of the benefits of streaming to Facebook or YouTube using Zoom so that I don't see how many viewers and how many likers, you know, that's one of the th things I like about streaming through Zoom so that I, I'm only seeing, I'm not seeing any engagement right now. I'm just, I'm just making this video. So um, I hope this helps uh, because it's of service to you, not because I'll feel better about myself. And uh, anyway, I, I really do hope this helps. And um, until the next video, I hope you'll give, you'll, you'll give these steps a try and, um, I hope it helps you to step more into your authentic power when you're on social media. All right, be well.